Hi, I'm Jason with 3D Printing Canada, and today we're going to do something a little fun. We're going to take the Creality Ender 3 and max out the build volume, or at least almost max it out, printing a gigantic Benchy. We're also going to show you how I'm slicing it. Let's get started. I've imported the standard Benchy here, and I've got a profile set up for the Ender 3, which defines the bed sizes among some other properties. And we're gonna max this guy out. So I'll click on him, make sure you have scale selected. I'm gonna do uniform scaling, and I'll just stretch it until it fills the bed. Now if it goes like this, it's just telling you that it's not going to fit in your build volume, so shrink it down a little bit. There, looks good. And I already have a profile that I've configured for a CR10 style Bowden setup, which is what the Ender 3 uses, so this should be a good starting point. Uh, we're just doing standard 0.2 millimeter layer height. Um, I'm also doing a 0.2 initial layer. Some people like to beef that up a little bit to give you some better bed adhesion but the Ender 3 has fantastic bed adhesion with the stock surface. Uh, for shells, I'm gonna do three. It's probably overkill. I really don't want any of the infill showing through, so I'm doing an extra shell than I normally would. Two is probably sufficient here. I'm doing a little bit of wipe on the outer shell. Uh, top and bottom layers, four on each. That should be plenty to bridge our infill. Um, I may go a little bit heavy on the infill, so I don't have to worry about adding so many top and bottom layers to, to hide that, top layers mostly, to make sure that it bridges that infill. Uh, if I was going with a lower infill, like say 15%, I might bump up the top layers to make sure we end up with a nice surface there. I should also mention that I expose all of the settings here, so you may not see all of these. Um, you can go up into the settings at the top and expose the options you'd like to see. Yeah, I do inner and then outer wall. I don't need to alternate an extra wall. I'm already doing three instead of two. I leave this on, this is personal preference. This is where two lines overlap a little bit. It will compensate for that uh, in the flow so that you don't end up with a pile of filament there or an excess amount of filament. I always leave fill tiny gaps and print thin walls. Z seam alignment, so this is where you can choose a particular area to have your Z seams line up. Um, you can do shortest, random, user specified, so if I wanted them all to be in the back left hand corner, let's say, or closest to that, I can choose that location. I'll just say sharpest corner. On the hull here, it's going to have a hard time choosing sharpest corner, it may be somewhat random. Infill, so this is what I was saying. I'll do this at 25%. Uh, 20%. 25 is probably overkill. 20 is <laughs> more than enough. Infill pattern, I like to use cubic subdivision. This is almost a kind of like a 3D geometric uh, shape, kind of like pyramids in a 3D pattern, repeating pattern. It's hard to describe. Uh, we can see it when we do our preview of our layers, actually. Yeah, so I want to turn this off. I want to do my walls first and then the infill, um, especially if you're doing something like two walls. If you're doing uh, two walls and you do the infill first, it can kind of poke through or show through a little bit. With three walls, I, I don't think that's going to be a problem at all, um, but we don't have any kind of crazy overhangs here, so I'm not going to do infill before walls. Um, we are printing with our select PLA, uh, which requires a little bit higher of a temperature. Um, I print somewhere between 215 and 220. Um, this is a pretty basic shape, so I'll go for 218, go somewhere in there. If I was printing something with a lot of overhangs, I would probably keep this on the lower end. Um, 
this is probably a good compromise. Uh, I always recommend you print a temp tower and understand how your particular filament behaves before randomly choosing a temperature that you see on a video like this. Uh, so 218, I'm actually just gonna set all these to the same. Uh, sorry about that. 218. So the build plate on the Ender 3, as I mentioned, uh, has great adhesion. I really don't need the temperature very high. Um, 50 is probably fine uh, for the initial layer. After that, just to save some heat uh, and power, I'll probably drop it down to 40, honestly. Um, oops, sorry, change that back to 50. So retraction distance, somewhere between six and eight. Um, I'll leave it at eight. And I tend to crank this to the max. Uh, depending on your firmware, this is actually capped in the firmware, I believe. All right, speed, that's awfully fast. Uh, if you don't care about ringing and such, you could go ahead and print that fast. It's completely capable of it. But you'll end up with a lot of ringing artifacts around things like the holes in the hulls or the, uh, the rim around the door. Um, kind of those sharp angular changes, you'll get uh, ringing. So we'll slow this down to something reasonable, let's say 70. I accept the defaults for the rest. Again, unless I'm really looking to push it. The inner walls, we don't need super good quality there, so they can be a little bit faster, and it automatically chooses um, the uh, print speed for the infill speed in the inner walls, and it halves that by default for the outer wall. Travel speed, just make sure this is set to some sort of sane value. Um, I've seen this set as high as 500, which is crazy for this type of printer. I don't suggest you turn on jerk or acceleration. Let the firmware values dictate those. Um, especially if you're printing over USB. I've seen the USB buffer get filled um, with the extra excess uh, commands coming across for both of these. Uh, the, the Arduino uh, 18 mega chips that power most of these printers um, don't have a whole lot of memory. Um, and as such, the, the buffer sizes are rather small. Retracting before it goes to the outer wall is a good idea, otherwise you can end up with a little bit of a bulge as it uh, moves from the inner to the outer wall. Um, you could turn this off. We don't have any real dainty kind of parts in here. Um, so if it, if it kind of, if the nozzle drags over top of a part, it's not gonna knock it free. Um, this will add a little bit of extra travel time, which we can see when we slice it. And we can see the effect that that makes. Uh, we're not going to Z-hop while retracted. That means every time the nozzle does a retract, it will actually move up in the Z a little bit, clearing the nozzle from the print. I find that makes little kind of blotchy dots every time that happens. Um, there are times where that's beneficial to, to be used, but I would say in this case, it's more of a hindrance than a help. Print cooling, yes, we want print cooling. Fan speed 100% after a couple layers. Um, Usually I let this go, you know, one layer without cooling fan and then cooling fan on. Um, I've seen people go, you know, they want two uncooled layers to get good adhesion. Um, I'll leave it at my kind of standard. And uh, supports, well, we don't need any supports for this. So let's leave that off. Bed adhesion, I do a skirt. I do two lines of a skirt. It's just kind of like a perimeter, uh, in this case, three millimeters away from the base of the print. Uh, it just lets me confirm that I have my bed leveling correct. I can make fine adjustments using baby stepping if that's enabled in your firmware um, to kind of compensate for any uh, the bed being too close or too far away from the nozzle. It's really just a comfort thing for me instead of having to wait until an entire first layer gets printed to find out that the bed's kind of out of out of whack. 
let's leave all of these fixes off while well, remove empty first layers. That's fine, self-explanatory. Let's leave that one on. Um, the rest of this, we don't really need to play with any of the stuff under experimental. We're not gonna use any of that. So let's uh, hit prepare and see what it comes up with as far as time. We know that historically, you know, this is, this is kind of off. It's off because of the, the default speed parameters that it uses uh, for custom printers. Um, to calculate its time. Uh, 19 hours and 43 minutes is very, very optimistic. Um, if you have your material uh, set correctly and you happen to know the density of the material, it will tell you the, the weight and you can get that pretty accurate. Uh, 19 hours and 43 minutes, I'm gonna guesstimate 25, 27 hours, somewhere around there. And when we hover over that, you can see a breakdown of, of where the time is taken in the print. Um, so we see travel, uh, two hours and 45 minutes of travel, or 14%. Um, and if we removed that option to avoid printed parts, uh, we'll just use the search, avoid, and turn that off. And so we're gonna go from 14% to The suspense is killing me. <laughs> no, that didn't really seem to change a whole lot. Uh, again, if you have that speed tuned to the actual speed of the printer, you may see um, more of a difference. Um, it's calculating that travel based on the machine moving insanely fast, uh, something that this printer is definitely not capable of. We'll leave that on. Uh, so if we look at the layer view, I can show you what cubic subdivision looks like. Oh, I'll prepare again. There we go. So if we go down through the layers, there's a better view. So it's, like I was saying, it's kind of hard to describe. It's like little pyramid shapes and each layer is slightly offset from the layer above it. Uh, it provides really good all around dimensional stability or support um, as opposed to something like a, a grid, which is really bi-directional. Um, and this is a very efficient use of filament and I find that it's very fast. Um, honeycomb is also a another favorite of mine. But whatever suits you. In this case, it's not really a structural item, um, so that's, that's not really that important. And uh, as I was mentioning, based on the percentage of infill, you can see it doesn't have to span a great distance to, to bridge or print the top, rather, over top of the infill. Um, if we had more sparse infill, we may want to add more top layers so that it ends up with a nice surface finish. So then just save that to your SD card plug it into your printer and get it started.
Well, there it is. We're about 32 or so hours later, and uh, it turned out pretty well, uh, considering it was my first attempt at a benchy this large. Uh, there's a couple extrusion issues here. You might be able to see right here, there's a little bit of under extrusion. And on the other side as well, a small line of under extrusion. And a little bit of irregularity on the extrusion layer by layer here, which almost looks like Z-banding. I'll have to investigate exactly what's causing that. They don't always turn out perfect, but you know what? All in all, turned out pretty well. There's very little ringing to speak of. And I could probably work on some of the Z-layer endpoints, uh, making those disappear a little bit more, tweaking some more slicing settings, but I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. All right, so like, subscribe, and uh, leave some comments down below. Let us know what else you'd like to see in the future, whether it be maintenance or upgrades or uh, some more crazy prints. Thanks for watching.